since it's not always easy for us to just look at the equation and come up with uh, solutions, one of the things that we can do is we can make a t-table. Do you guys remember making a t-table of values? Yeah. So it really works best if you already have y solved for, if you have one of the variables by itself. So if I take y equals negative 2x plus 7, okay? I can just make a table of values like this. <coughs> now, normally, you guys would just pick easy values of x to plug in here. You'd probably start with something like 0, 1, and 2. I mean, that works well enough for me. Bless you. <laughs> Now, if I have 0, 1, and 2, you're just trying to plug those into this equation and tell me what y equals. If x is 0, plug that in, what do you get for y? Seven. You get 7. If I plug in 1, what do I get? I get 5, and if I plug in 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 7 is positive 3. Now, this is a linear equation. There are no exponents other than, other than 1. You don't have any variables in the denominator. You don't have variables being multiplied times each other. It's linear. That means its representation as a graph should be a line. So when I plot these points, as long as I've done this correctly, it should be a line. So let's plot these. We have 0, 7, have 1, 5, and I have 2, 3. Does it look like these guys are going to form a line for us? Yes. Now, w this is one of the things I want you to be able to do when you're, whenever you're graphing, especially when you're graphing lines. I want you to take these points. I want you to extrapolate. I want you to keep going on in the same kind of pattern. And that relates back to the slope concept that we talked about in 0308. When you look at this, as you go from point to point, look what you're doing. You're going, let me do it this way. You're going down 2 and over 1 down 2 and over 1. So it only seems to make sense that if I keep going in that same pattern, I'll find other points, other solutions for this equation. If I go down 2 and over 1, I get another point. You guys with me on that? And notice what I'm saying here. Again, all of the stuff that we're doing today in these videos is not just one particular concept that I want to look at. We're tying together everything that we've had with graphing because this is a review for you. My slope, do you remember what letter I used to represent slope? It was M. My slope is rise over run. Now what I'm saying here from point to point is that I'm doing what? What's my rise? What's your rise? I'm going down two, but I'm going to the right 1. So negative 2 over positive 1 is a slope of negative 2. And you see that right here. This guy is solved for y. And you see the negative 2 as the coefficient of x. Just what we have with the slope-intercept form from a long time ago. Okay. So if I keep doing this, going down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, and so on, I get all of these nice, easy to identify points on my graph. I can even go backwards and to the left. You go up and to the left. So instead of going down 2 and over 1, I can go up 2 and to the left 1. So get another point. So all of these points give me a nice line. And I just need to connect the dots. And you know, if you're not sure if some of these points are really where, they're sub where they are, if these are really true, uh, let's look at this guy right here. What are the coordinates for this point? 6, negative 5. So I maintain that if you plug a 6 in right here, you should get negative 5. Well, if you do the scratch work, that's negative 2 times 6 plus 7. That's negative 12 plus 7, and you do get, you get negative 5. So everything matches up. You got an extra point right here. It matches up with something you would have gotten from the t-table. So we're good. We just need to connect the dots.
And here's something you need to be aware of whenever you're graphing. When you graph, you don't graph line segments when we're trying to graph lines. To show that we're graphing a line, you put arrows at the end of these lines. If you don't, you will lose points. Are you with me on that? Okay. Now we can easily check this with with a graph, and you see that these guys are exactly the same. You with me on that? Now, something else to remind you guys of, since we are talking about the slope. We talked about intercepts before, right? When we talked about slope, we talked about the slope-intercept form. Okay, And what was the slope-intercept form? Well, the slope-intercept form was y equals mx plus b. Okay. And the things that we noted about this is that you have to be solved for y. You have to have y completely by itself. And your m, this coefficient of x, is your slope. And we remember that we look at the slope as being rise over run. That tells you how to move. But what did B mean? That leads me to the y-intercept. But remember, intercepts are points. And we just got done saying that points are ordered pairs. So this is the ordered pair 0, B, right? And notice what you had here from the t-table. I plugged in 0 up here, and what did I get out? 7. So this 7 right here, this constant, is the same number that I see here when I plugged in 0. So I get my y-intercept right there of 0, 7. Right? And so you see with the computer answer, here is my y-intercept of 0, 7. And you've got your slope of down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and so on. All these nice, easy to identify points. Okay. Any questions about that guy? Okay. 